Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, we've been watching this whole scenario, in fact, all day today, as the announcement, President Trump coming out on Twitter first saying that the United States has finally defeated ISIS. And of course, uh, now uh, the announcement of the U.S. troop withdrawal out of Syria uh, leaves some very jubilant about the announcement and leaves others pretty bewildered. And that's something I want to kind of examine here, uh, just here in the next few minutes here on Israeli News Live. Uh, there's a number of people speaking about it. RT says uh, Russia wins fury in Washington as Trump announces withdrawal from Syria. And there are a number of congressmen and senators that are, that are really speaking out against this movement of the U.S. troops out of Syria because it leaves our allies, the Kurds, once again empty-handed with a Turkish military that is about ready to devour uh, all the Kurds in northern and now, of course, eastern Syria. It's going to be a power grab and a vacuum uh, that the U.S. troops will leave that will, that will create a major vacuum in this part of the region here and will then put uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in a very peculiar situation because Russia, kind of like that of the United States, has more loyalty towards Turkey than they do Syria. And in this case here, the Kurds in every situation have been dumped by either Russian or U.S. Uh, backed help in the region. And yet they seem to be one of the best fighters against the ISIS militants in the entire country uh, since the Civil War began eight years ago. And as always, they're left out to dry. Like we've seen in Afrin uh, some time back now, a little over a year ago, when Russia wouldn't help the, the Kurds uh, and allowed the Turks to move their forces in and their backed uh, jihadists into the region and have genocided the Kurdish population there. And of course in uh, Mambij, also in the eastern part near the Euphrates River, was threatened by the Turkish government to take out American troops along with the Kurds if America didn't leave. Well, it seems like President Trump is kind of getting what he wanted after all. As long as the Patriot missile system would be bought by the, uh, by the Turks, well, more business back home, and of course, we'll pull out. But there's another problem with that as well. As I watch the pullout that's being spoken about right now, and according to the State Department, U.S. forces are already pulling out of the region. And the troubling issue for me is, is that President Trump has said this before, and each time he spoke about pulling out of Syria, it was followed with, well, another staged chemical attack, blamed on Russia, or blamed on Syria, only to use that to justify launching uh, cruise missiles into Syria, and, uh, and of course other targets that could be hit. The second time around, though, didn't go quite as well, because uh, there was enough evidence gathered by forces on the ground as well as independent media working inside of Syria that was able to expose that plot once again. And of course, as we saw, there were British intelligence officers involved in the, uh, the alleged uh, use of the um, chlorine gas over in the eastern part of Damascus in the suburbs there and didn't end up in a retaliation by Trump that time. But again, it was another time where Trump was going to move the troops out of Syria. Now, I personally have always felt like moving our troops out of Syria is the best thing we can do. But when it comes to the Kurds, then who's going to take up for these guys? They have lived in Syria. Not all Kurds are from Syria, but they have lived in the northeast part of Syria for hundreds and hundreds of years. And knowing that the Turkish government will plan their genocide as the U.S. leaves the country is a bit worrisome to me. Now, with that being stated, VOA News has brought out the, uh, this Russian, Iran, and Turkey seek deal on new Syrian constitution body. You know, I just cannot help but wonder if President Bashar al-Assad, if he's just the pawn in the game here for these uh, three super, or not superpowers, but Eastern powers in Russia and Iran and Turkey, or, or what's the deal here? It says Turkey President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, right Russia President Vladimir Putin's center, and Iran's President Hassan Rouhani are seen at a news conference following their talks on Syria in Russia. 
Black Sea Resort of Sochi on November the 22nd, 2017. Now, Russia and Iran and Turkey are close to an agreement on a composition of a Syrian constitution committee that could pave the way uh, for drafting a new charter followed, followed by elections, diplomats said on Monday. And of course, Erdogan always gives these false statements like, we would accept Bashar al-Assad as long as the people democratically elect him. The people have over and over and over democratically elected Bashar al-Assad to be their president. In fact, he has been the only voice uh, in Syria that has stood for the Christian community, uh, his unbiased approach in his country. It does not matter if you're Sunni, Shi'i, uh, Shiite, or if you're, if you're a Christian or a Jew, you had the ability to live in this country in freedom. But as we've stated many times over and over and over, as Isaiah the prophet once said, the fortress for Ephraim will fall when Damascus goes down. Well, we already know where the blame will be on that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's always been, of course, in this situation here for these talks about this new constitution. Uh, they're looking for X number of individuals that are supposed to be part of that uh, the members that would uh, be part of the committee, 150 of those members there, and they never can agree on who the 150 would actually be to bring about the new constitutional change. So I really wonder if they're going to even come up with it even now. But I cannot help, though, that perhaps the U.S. pull out of troops, and of course our troop numbers are alleged to be about 2,000. I wouldn't doubt if it's more. But could we be pulling our troops out more so for another strategic move in the region? Well, not too far from the region, I might add, and that would be over to Europe. As we know, uh, the Russian Insight says officially Ukraine plans another naval foray in the Sea of Azov, and they are asking not only for NATO warships to accompany them as they try to go through the Kerch Strait there where uh, the Kerch Bridge that Russia built to uh, connect Crimea to the mainland Russia. Uh, but uh, at the same time, they're asking if they can't get that, they would at least like to have some uh, officials from different nations to accompany them on their military ships. That way they figure that Russia won't board their ships and overtake them. Well, Russia is not playing games when it comes to that issue. It says Russia not increasing military presence in the, in, in, in the Azov Sea, according to the foreign ministry. But as Russia clearly has stated, there is a problem here. And as they noted, and as we've noted here as well on Israeli News Live, time and time again and everything, from the very beginning of the construction of the Kerch Bridge, the Ukrainian government, the officials, the president, Poroshenko, they have all spoke about destroying this bridge. So Russia, according to the Sputnik News here, says that they're always keeping that presence there. Maria Zakharova uh, the spokeswoman for the uh, spokeswoman for the foreign ministry stated here, Russia is not increasing its military presence in the Sea of Azov. There are no Russian naval bases there. The forces that are there are used to guard the Crimean Bridge. I remind you that from the very beginning of the statements about this uh, infrastructure facility construction plans, we have heard direct calls by Ukrainian officials, politicians, security officials who obey the Kiev regime to destroy it these forces are also used to ensure the safety of navigation, Zakharova said in a briefing. Well, let me just add one clarification in there, though. Russia does have about six submarines there in the Black Sea with cruise missile capabilities on board with about 1,500 mile capability for the region. So uh, Russia may not be increasing the extra presence for the bridge itself, but Russia does have a formidable force there. Russia has also moved in uh, to the Sea of Azov, the landing ships in the event of a Kiev provocation on the separatists on the eastern side of Ukraine. So there is trouble on the sea. Boy, that brings up biblical prophecy, doesn't it? Trouble on the sea and it cannot be quieted. I just cannot help but wonder as I watch the movement of military forces. We know that the U.S. had uh, recently in Germany, they had uh, canceled some of the leave for American troops to go back home. Uh, and even though the article was about certain soldiers trying to get refunds on their plane tickets after their, their leave was canceled, it still brings up the issue whether or not um, the U.S. is anticipating some type of action, whether it be between Ukraine or that of Russia. 
You know, Hal Turner had brought out on his broadcast uh, or in one of his articles there recently stated uh, a comment that we've spoke about many times ourselves, and that is how that President uh, Putin has often said, if you're in a fight and you know you're about to get into a fight, best thing to do is to strike first. And of course, uh, he has wondered, and, and, and uh, Hal Turner's uh, latest, one of his latest articles that he came out with is that uh, maybe Putin is planning on striking first when it comes to Ukraine. Don't know. Don't know. As I said, too, we have objectively looked at this, and we have seen the Ukrainian government has been building up their forces uh, for retaking the separatist region of Donetsk or the Donbass region on eastern Ukraine as well as he has met with Turkey to take back Crimea uh, a couple of years ago that we reported that on here on Israeli News Live too. So we'll keep you guys up to date on, on what's going on. I am going to be uh, speaking a little bit more in depth on some of these issues on uh, uh, Patreon. So those of you that want to join us over there, uh, hopefully this afternoon we'll have that up and running for you. Uh, just looking a little bit deeper in some of our thoughts on the current situation going on in the Middle East as well as Ukraine. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov, uh, and Shalom Shalom in a world of Ain Shalom. There just is no peace.